evening, everyone, and welcome. This is Twist Gaming, where you get to play board games with us. We are coming to you live here from our studio in rainy South Florida, bringing you our first impression session of tonight's PSI Presents, where we show off some wonderful games from PSI's catalog. And today we had the pleasure of showing off Dragon's Gate College by NSKN Studios, or NSKN Games. And first up, let's get some introductions out of the way. As usual, I'm Matt. I'm Anne. And I'm Josh. And we are Twist Gaming. So, Josh, a little primer for everyone. What is Dragon's Gate College? Um, this is a college out in Europe that you can go to and role play as a wizard. No, it's a it's a Euro style uh, victory point game where we each have our own college wizard campus, I guess. Mm -hmm. Or and uh, we're training. We we have professors or wizards that are training apprentices, apprentices to become wizards, rogues, and warriors. So so we're, we're adventure school. We're not just Completely wizard school. Uh, and that, we're doing it in a lot of ways. Yeah, a lot of ways. So I'm going to go over to the board here so I can show yeah. off some of the things that are going on here because it's a lot. So you're going to be training your students on this side over here. You're going to be going through the training dungeon here. You're going to set your turn order over here. You're going to hire new professors there. You're going to hire. You're going to recruit new apprentices there. You're going to get some cash there. You're going to build new buildings for your point to it there. You've got your wonderful helper imps, which are going to help you modify some stuff, and you can get those over there. And then you get different bonuses as well for the three different classes that you train in, whether it be wizard, rogue, or yeah, brawl. And, and there's like oh, a ton of million ways to get uh, prestige, which is their victory points. So those are all the different ways that you can earn prestige in the game. And that's with gold, with imps, with trophies uh, with subterfuge, which is a rogue thing, with your buildings, with your apprentices, with your wizards, with yeah. your professors, how far you are on the dungeon track, just everything. Yeah. So it's... go back to the board. So basically how the game works is there's a bunch of dice, you roll it, and then you get to do... Well, one person, that your first player rolls... Well, I think that's really cool. That's a little different. The first yeah. player rolls a dice, and then the rest of the players are going to draft from Draft that it, pool. and then you can use the dice to match the pips to do these actions. Um, and then... You also have colored, so if someone uses your color die, you also get to do the action with them, so you can kind of get more actions and stuff like that. A uh, very simplified view of it. So, first thing we're going to talk about is favorite aspects of the game, and we typically start out with the person who won. So, who's that today? Guys? Josh! I don't think it was. I think it was me. So, I was the uh, winner. You, you have five long. points, Matt. There I have yes. 50. There you Seriously. go. I have ten, more point, ten times the points. <laughs> So uh, I did win this evening, and it, but I just want to point out how incredibly close the game was. We were going through the order of the scoring items, and we got to the last two items, which uh, altered the score, and literally it was tied three-way. Yeah. Yep. So at like 47 points apiece on a 50-point tracker. Yeah. I think yep. it was at 49. We were right at the end, Matt. Right it's not the important point, Joshua. I don't know. Continue. Thank you, Ann. Uh So one of my favorite aspects of the game that I think that it does really well is the dice drafting in that you have the different colored dice, which uh, you uh, white dice you take for yourself and you use it. End of story. That's kind of the, the general dice. If someone If you take someone else's color, they get a turn immediately following yours. And I really like that because it forces you to think a little bit more of if I take this die, is it going to help out my opponent to use it now versus what if I go for someone else's die or what if I go for a generic die? And one of the cool things as well, and I'm going to go back to the board here because that's one of the things that we didn't talk about, is you can spend a die to convert a white die that's spent into a, your color die. Yeah. So I just thought that that was really cool to basically influence the game because everyone starts out with one of their own color die in, but you could go up to three. And it's just so many things with just the dice drafting that yeah. make you think strategically of how you want to allocate your drafting and then your resources to maybe increase your future roles with that one, for instance. I want to go off that real quick. You were talking about using someone else's die and it gives you think of helping them. Yeah. You could also hindrance them. Correct. Because you can be like, oh, this action, you know, like, I'm not ready to do that action yet. Like, like, there's some mitigation you can do, but, like, there was points where, like, oh, I'm going to use this this six to go here and train, and I'm like, I'm not ready to train, and I can't do anything else with that six, really, that, like, is beneficial to me. That was happened to, to me, the... like, late in the game. Yeah. Um, so I thought that that was really cool, just that it adds another 
level to it uh, completely. We have a question in chat, which is a pretty good one, to tag off of your uh, comment about the point scoring. Is it, is it possible to have a runaway leader of the game, or is the game tight all the way through? Can someone get too much of a lead in the middle of the game where no one can catch up? So well, I want to oh. answer that, and I'm going to step all over you. Go for it. Sorry. Sorry. Um, it's because it's one of the things that I really liked. Uh, I get, I don't, I'm not a big fan of very PvP kind of games. I don't like kind of heads-on stuff. And what I really enjoyed about this game is there's a lot of end-game scoring. Mm -hmm. So when you're, you're playing a PvP game where there's kind of real-time scoring, you can see a bit of a runaway leader. And in our game, if you go back and watch the playthrough section, Josh was definitely, I would consider, the runaway leader for most of the game. Maybe not runaway because I think the highest spread he had was maybe seven points, yeah, six, seven maybe points. maybe away from you, but from yeah. me, I was a good ten points behind oh, yeah. you guys for the majority of the beginning of the game. Yeah. And I wound up winning. Because so. there's so many end game conditions that influence your scoring that I didn't, I never, even though I kind of felt a little discouraged with Josh being ahead, it wasn't anything like, man, there's no way I'm going to be able to catch up to him yeah. because he's way out here. All right, Josh, any aspects of the game that you really like that you wanted to point out um, that maybe we haven't touched on yet? I like the whole... Th there's a little bit of engine building in this game, and I like that. I really like the M concept of being able to change your dice yeah, and, and work with... Like, that bad luck can be mitigated by some strategic planning and stuff like that. So right off the bat, one of the first buildings that I built in my campus was one that gives you a free imp every round. So every round I was getting the ability to change at least one of my dice, and that was huge. Yeah. So I never felt like I was pigeonholed into not being able to do something I wanted to do. Yeah. And I, I like, there's just a lot of different things. Like, so on the board here, like this is kind of set up randomly. So there's different costs to these guys and different requirements. Um, so that's going to change up. The so it's going to change up the repayability a little bit. And I, I don't even know if that's needed that much, but it's there. Yeah. Uh, and how you play the tokens and what gets what. Uh, but like I like this whole. If you go to your hand, uh, the hand cam app. Uh, yeah. Building out the college cam with all the different locations and stuff and all the different benefits. I thought that was awesome. I, I think that's really cool, um, and I really enjoyed that aspect of doing that and making it a little bit the campus bigger. Um, and things like that. And I think, like, there wasn't, like, the only thing I think Anne used it once was to turn the money into points. I did. I lo was looking at how much cash that I had, uh, and I knew that five coins were one victory point, and I had a couple of excess, I had, like, excess money, and I noticed the deal was seven po uh, seven coins for three points. Seven and I was like, is a lot better than five to one. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to take advantage of, of that. Yeah. So, like, there's a few things like we didn't we really didn't play the first player tracker, but like there wasn't much of a need. To. Much of a need. Yeah. So it was very interesting to see how everything kind of worked together, and I, I I found this a really good engine building. Mm -hmm. um, the game really does present you with a lot of options of what to do on your turn, so that way you really have different strategies to go about this. And it was very overwhelming to look at at first, but I think once Josh started explaining the rules, about halfway through him explaining the rules, I'm like, oh, this isn't hard. There's just a lot of options. Yeah. You know, uh, we each have a different level of familiarity with the game when we come to sit down at the spotlights, and uh, we've mentioned before that it's done intentionally so that we can show you how easy a game is to come and sit up to and just dive right in because you can't really hide that live. Uh, and that being said, I'm the one who, yay, I get to be the most new to the games typically. Mm -hmm. I wish that I had, there's a couple of things that I was confused confused about that I caught on during the game, which I wish I had understood at the beginning of the game, specifically the rooms. I didn't really understand fully how the rooms had the various uh, powers and bonuses and whatnot. Like you mentioned, oh, they have bonuses, but I didn't realize how significant to the game that was right. before sitting down. And then I saw you going through the rule book after somebody had already purchased one. And I was like, wow, that's that's a really cool kind of thing, all the various ones, but it's definitely, it was very good for you for engine building because you got something that gave you a bonus each turn off the bat, and it would have been very good for me to have known that in the beginning. One thing I want to point out about the rooms, too, is that majority of the rooms have a limit of one for them, so right. it really is a, like a resource management thing where yeah. you're trying to run and rush to the gate and get exactly what you want, because... 
Josh, you and I have such a similar play style when it comes to games like these where you went ahead of me and bought exactly what I wanted two or three times, if not more, during oh. the game. We have another question from chat asking, uh, the play count on this is two to four. Um, we've only played three. I yeah. can see two. I think two would still be fine. There are some modifications to the game to make it run a little smoother at two. I'd play it at two. Yeah, I, I don't think there. I, I actually don't think there's any. The only modification is actually four, is these two spots that open up. There's a couple room. There's a tiles couple of that get oh, room tiles for two. Okay, I know there's one room tile for uh, four that got removed. I didn't look at that whole book and look at the anything. I, I only remember one being removed for four players. Okay, so any other positives or, that you guys want to focus on? The art. Can we take a minute to just really appreciate the art here? Sometimes games uh, have art styles that either aren't consistent or really don't uh, evoke the right emotion for a game. And while I do have one qualm with the art, overall, I think it's really cute. And I think I kind of, I like like the, um, uh, like you see here in the hourglass, I don't know if I would really consider that like a watercolor style, but like the texture, it's all very fun and whimsical and I really enjoyed it. It, it makes me feel like, you know, the game's really uh, daunting when you look at the board, but I feel like the whimsical art kind of makes... Do you like uh, the, the door trying to eat a, things? It's adorable. The little door trying to it's eat things. It's adorable. I'm done talking. Um, but I, I think that it makes a very... I think that a fun art style makes a daunting game more approachable. Absolutely. And just jumping and piggybacking off mm -hmm. of the art style, uh, one of the other things that we typically talk about with games is quick reference guides. And this yes. game did a great job of providing a quick reference guide for everyone that shows you yes. both the turn phase and all the actions, very clear and concise, as well as a handy-dandy scoring table. So it's not like at any point during the game you had to go and check the rule book if you weren't sure of how you were going to score things. You had something right in front of your face, and given that there's so many ways to score, I think that was completely necessary. Yep. One other thing is that there's a whole mess of different room tiles. And I said to Josh beforehand, oh, this might be a problem. But uh, they actually put in the rule book a reference guide of every single room tile, what they do, how many there are, a description of them. Yep. It's awesome. I thought that was fantastic, and I think that that took a lot of the headache that I anticipated there being out of the game. I definitely consistently referenced both the quick reference guide for the victory points, as well as, I know you and I were kind of sharing uh, the instruction booklet looking at the various rooms throughout the entire game. Uh, I got a little confused. Uh, and it wasn't cleared up until the end with the victory points. Uh, if you go back to your hand cam... Oh, uh, with who has the most With who things? has the most. I thought... Okay, I was I, confused with the... I, it makes... It's one of those things where it's like, now that somebody said it, I totally get it. I thought that that was one victory point per apprentice, so that's why I was trying to train people out. And I was like, oh, if I get all these people trained, I get an extra one at the end. But it's who has the most from that. Who has the most still in their college? Yeah, who was the most still in their college? So that one, that one confused me a little bit. Um, speaking of the apprentices and the teachers, uh, back to art. If you would show off a couple of these tiles, I think it's super important to point out that they have different art. I, I did not see a There's repeat. Like a couple duplicates uh, with the the students. I think there isn't. Yeah, like the, these two right here. One's got, her hair's different. Oh, they are different. Yeah. So all the ones I gave you were different, and I handed you, what, I five, ten? I saw two orphan annies. So I, I say orphan yeah, annies, there's like, this one here yeah. that there reminded me a lot of orphan annies. Yeah, it does a little bit, with the red dress. So, so th there's... It's different colors. It's the same face, but it's still... And it's still different colors. Like, they took the time to individually do something for each one. And I think you've got a lot of really different representations. So that was cool. Like that's one of those things that I pick up and notice on is, you know, is there, are like there- Santa Claus? Oh, that's so good. Look at that one. Um, are there, are there not enough girls? Are there not enough guys? It's just, it's just when you're somebody who likes to play games and likes the immersive experience in a game, you want to see characters in your game that you can relate to. So it was really nice to see all of the uh, different representation in the art. These are the little details that I like in a mm -hmm. game. It shows that somebody's paying attention and that they care. So moving on to the constructive criticism section, one thing that uh, I wanted to point out was, I'm going to go back to my hand cam here, uh, one little symbology thing bugged me, and that was uh, on the scoring 
it's you get one whoever's got the most apprentices gains a point. Um, I thought that it was you count up the empty rooms. The empty rooms. I didn't realize that I was counting up the trained apprentices, and then I didn't realize that it wasn't trained apprentices though. It was it was untrained apprentices in your house. Oh, okay. Yeah, and that one counts as an untrained up. Right. So this this is what confused me that this counts as an untrained per- apprentice, but it look, this kind of looks like a rum, right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, so that was just one little gripe I had. If they put like a plus one in that, I feel like that would have cleared it up a hundred percent to me. Um, but that's pretty much it for me. I know it's a little minor gripe, but how about you two? Is there anything that you want to point out regarding any constructive criticisms? Uh, one of the things I noticed while you guys were asking me to grab rooms. It would have been nice to have the actual room name on the tiles. Ah. Um, they do have the room number on it, though. Oh, okay. So if you guys did tell me the number, it wouldn't have been a big deal. Oh, yeah. If you I also the think number. the icons on the room tiles could be better because I cannot tell. Matt, can you pull up your cam? That one that gives you plus one and plus one, the, uh, the bar, it gives you one and oh. one every turn, right? Yeah. Look at this one. This one is a one in three immediately, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's no... No designation between the two except in the rule book. No, nothing there. So um, that I, I would have liked something a little bit clearer on those. Um, so I, I think that was one of my biggest... Gra- like, just the room's just a little bit hard. Like, since I wasn't looking at the book and right. I was kind of just looking at the cards, it would have been nice to have a little bit more information on those. Um Anne, how about you? I have two little things that I kind of wanted to touch on. Um, the first one, uh, I did mention there was a little grip I had about the art style. I do love it. It's very fun. It's very whimsical. The door is cute, but I don't think that it matches the same kind of art style. It's, it's a little bit more realistic, and that's the same with the with the actual trophies. It's just they don't – I like them. They're pretty, right? But I don't think it meshes. So that's just a little a little nitpicky thing. The other thing that really kind of I was a little more frustrated with, there's so many wizard cards. So many wizard cards for a little three-player game. And these were cool. Like the bonuses that came through, you didn't really know what you were getting. There was a lot of cool perks. I kind of wish that there were more ways to have gotten that wizard card. Yeah, that's interesting considering there's that there's four... 14 ways to get the card for everyone in the game if you play a four-player game. How are there 14 for each player person? And not for each person. Overall, there are 10 wizards you yeah, can collect. Yeah, 10 wizards. And each person's sheet has, you can get oh, a card. get a wizard card. No, you can't. I thought it was. No. Nope. So no, there's only 10. There's only 10 ways to get a wizard card. So that's pretty impressive that they put a deck of like 40 cards in there. I mean, I get the replayability, but I would have liked to see a lot more of those cards come out during the game, especially because there were a lot of points in the game where, I mean, I remember even in like the first couple of rounds, I was like, I got a six. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Like I, I felt stuck. So I wish there was a way and I would have even, I'd have, I'd have paid for it to, to do something cooler than, like I th- feel like the one time I ended my turn like I wasted my six. Like I was just like, oh, I'm, I can't buy the room because then it'll mess up my uh, maintenance when I pulled my mulligan. I pulled a mulligan. Uh, question for you here. Yep. So I see that you add one to the brawl track for landing on this space. Yes. Mm-hmm. You add one to the wizard track for putting a token in your completed track here. Oh. Yep. Is there no way to get a rogue? Uh, no, not straight up. Seems a little unbalanced to me. So that's just one little quirk that I'm thinking about now. Where did I see a lot of rogue bonuses, though? Maybe it was just in the rooms that I'm mistaking it. Yeah, the rooms have a lot of plus one rogue. Yeah. Oh, okay. So maybe that's what it is, is that it gets balanced out with the uh, I, Though it might be even with everything Between else. the various kinds of rooms. But I was definitely, yeah. I had an eye out on the rogue because I was really worried about that point spread on the on the rogue track. You got to be sneaky to get rogue credit, is what Chad's saying. Um... Yeah, I was a little concerned with me falling behind early in the game, but didn't matter in the end, so there's really no criticism there. Um, one thing maybe is that the first player track seemed a little under underutilized, Definitely. and I'm thinking maybe that was our play style that did it. 
I didn't see an advantage of it. The one time that I wasted, I, I feel like I really, I honestly feel like I wasted my turn going on here. I think I got the imp for it. Um, an imp. I was gonna get the first terrible. player. To no, no. I mean, two imps. That was one of the things that I was considering too. Was like, all right, well, two imps is a victory point because I was living off of the quick reference guide. Um, I know you had a lot of imps, and I was getting a little worried. Is like, oh, he's gonna get so many victory points from that. Oh, one turn, I used like five of them. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like if the rewards were just a little bit higher for the player track, like maybe two imps and three gold or something to that effect. Yeah, then maybe that would get I used I think then more. we would have definitely used it. That was definitely a toss-away move, I feel like, which is probably what it was designed for since it's since any die option, you can come here. Right. But we didn't use it once. I did. Did you? To yeah. get the imp. You just don't want to get the imp. But I was already going to get the first player token. When Josh first explained the rules to me, I think he misunderstood how the first player token worked. Yeah, was and what off. he said was, in order, it's, you get the first, a random person gets the first player token first. And then the only way to take the first player token away from that person is to come down here and spend a die and take it. And I was like, oh, that's a little aggressive, but I would have, I think I would have preferred that. I more. I agree, because then it would have made it definitely much more attainable, because if you yes. started with the first player token and it never left you, that would have completely screwed me for the game. Yep, and I, I think that, too, it was really... I, I thought originally it was, okay, if I if I put my token here, do I get all of the benefits here if nobody else comes here? And I thought that would have been cool, too, because it's like, okay, I'm going to risk putting my token all the way over here. I mean, maybe the imp isn't as great as a, a one. Like, these seem to be equivalent they're not really because it's like no, half a victory imp is point. adding no, one imp. to your die roll. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's impressive. So, so, but in a lot of times in the game, the choice is one coin or one imp. So it's kind of a little weird about that. So if the design is, if the thought behind the design is that an imp and a one coin are equivalent, then I would have liked to see more of a bonus on that third coin and been like, okay, I'm going to risk going all the way over here for the big, for the whole shebang, and yeah. maybe somebody won't come here and steal the stuff behind me. All right. Anything else? I think we covered most of the criticisms yeah. here. And as you can yeah. see, most of them aren't really that big. No. Uh, I think this game does a really good job with uh, being heavy enough to be pretty strategic without being ridiculously overly complex. i definitely say this is probably one of the heavier games we've played on stream. Absolutely. And so this is going to bring us into the most important question of the evening of would you play this game again? Josh! Yeah, I'll play this again. And? I think I'd play this again, and I think that this would be a game that I choose to take out to play with other people. Would you play this with your kids? I was thinking about that question as I was thinking about whether I would take it out. Um, <sighs> Michael, maybe? Michael, maybe. This is way too much for David, and it's definitely a game where if I took it out and played it with them, I would play a couple of dummy rounds with them first just because it's so much going on. Uh, so my two boys, just to give some reference for the people at home, my oldest is 15, my youngest is 10. So I would probably play this with my 15 year old, but even then I would probably play a, a few practice rounds just to have him get everything that's going on. And for me, I would definitely play this game again. I really enjoyed the amount of options that this game presented and I think that the dice drafting uh, mechanic was very nice. Yeah, it was cool. And uh, very happy with the scoring system. I, I just like the game overall. Just a, a few of the minor tweaks that we had in the constructive criticisms, but I would definitely play this again. Uh, considering that this is fairly heavy for our play style, that's, you know, it's definitely some praise, additional praise uh, coming from us as well. So if you have any other comments. I think that's it. And? No, I think I'm good. All right, so thank you all for joining us this evening. As a reminder, we're going to be doing our live giveaway at the end of the stream, and we have our twist giveaway, which is going to be going uh, for about two weeks. And if you haven't watched, our code for the evening is going to be WIZARD. That's going to give you some bonus entries to that as well, and you can win your own copy of Dragon's Gate College by NSKN. Thank you very much to PSI Presents, or PSI, I've got my alliteration down. Thank you very much to PSI to providing us with both of those copies for the giveaway for this PSI Presents show and all of our PSI Presents shows. Shows. And with that, we're going to be signing off for now. Uh, as a reminder, this stream and all of this week's streams were sponsored by... I'm going to toss this to Josh. PSI with Dragon Gate College, first of all. Uh, then we have Unlocked by Space Cowboys. And we have Remnant by Fireside Games. So if you missed those, we did that on Monday and yesterday, Wednesday. Um, and those are up available on VOD on Twitch and 
Both of them should be on YouTube soon. Fantastic. Thank you all for joining us this evening. As usual, I'm Matt. I'm Ann. I'm Josh. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night.